it usually takes like uh, 10 or 15 minutes till we get to full four. Here we go, somebody's joining us. Yep, very good. Okay, well, I'm gonna get started. Good, good evening and welcome uh, to Crossroads Career Seminar tonight. Uh, we have a great speaker and program set up for you. We, as always, we really appreciate you joining us this evening and uh, hopefully you'll get what you're looking for. Uh, my name is Tom Jacobson. Uh, I lead one of the uh, Crossroads groups. There's three in the Twin Cities area um, out of Woodbury and uh, Crossroads provides a lot of great services uh, that are all free of charge pretty much and uh, you'll find something you need uh, hopefully uh, in our uh, offerings. So uh, you know check us out uh, uh, through our website and uh, I'll go over that later uh, but uh, there's a lot of great opportunities here, and we have a lot of great volunteers that really uh, devote themselves to providing the types of things that most people need in job search and are in transition. So um, again, welcome. Uh, we're happy to have you tonight, uh, and I uh, uh, hope you enjoy uh, what we all have to say. So let me get started by letting you know how this program works. Uh, I'll I'm doing a brief introduction here uh, that'll take uh, no more than five minutes. Um, and then I'll introduce our uh, crossroads in my career speaker or our transition speaker. Uh, and that, that's tonight will be Wes Roper. And then uh, we'll have our main uh, seminar, which is how to develop a resume that gets the attention you want uh, by Nancy Fresh and uh, um, Frosh. And, uh, and then I'll wrap up at the end uh, with the five minutes of what, uh, five to 10 of what crossroads delivers. Uh, and, uh, in services and, and ideas. So um, <clears throat> look forward to that. Um, so that's the agenda for tonight. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, there'll be something in there you enjoy. So let me quickly share a um, quick thing out of the Bible. Um, it came from uh, the latest Crossroads National uh, Publication. And in, in the book of Proverbs 24, 27, put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. And when I look at that, I think I think of a lot of great things um, uh, outside, but that isn't really what that means in, in today's world. Uh, getting yourself ready. Be ready for almost anything. You know, get right spiritually. Fill yourself with gratitude. Uh, serve others, uh, and it will impact your life greatly. Um, fill yourself with hope. Uh, to go forward and find what you're passionate about in life. Um, you know, that's what that means to me. And uh, hopefully you see it the same way and you go out and do those things that each and every day that make you more prosperous. So um, I hope that uh, uh, the hope of that uh, is instilled in you today. Um, let me just uh, stop. There's a lot of great uh, things in the Bible and scripture that God shares with us and if we take it to heart, uh, we, can, we can make the most of it. Okay, let me start with a quick prayer. Lord, thank you for bringing us together tonight to share and to grow, to guide us where your plans are leading us. If we are in transitions, help us to talk to you through prayer and give us strength and inspiration so we would go out and find the career opportunities that we want. Help us to really focus on what we're trying to do each day and work our fields uh, so that we may actually find the opportunities that we desire. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, at this time, um, I would like to introduce our career transition speaker, Wes Wolper. And Wes has uh, been a part of Crossroads for many years. He's a, um, he leads, uh, along with Wes Tang, uh, uh, a wonderful group of networkers through uh, Networking with Grace. And uh, I think he's one of the best networkers I have ever met. And I'm gonna let you take it away, Wes. Thanks, Tom. Good evening, everybody. Um, I never quite know how, what to say when people introduce me that way. I'm never really very comfortable with it. So let me, let me maybe just give you some observations on, on networking as I saw. And I left corporate America about six years ago to uh, start a business. And I had been squirreled away in my, my company, working hard, trying to do a good things. And 
I got started in this role as a business broker and I, I had no idea what networking was. I, <laughs> hindsight, it was probably not the smartest career change, but, but I wanted to do it for, for balance reasons. And uh, here I am six and a half, almost seven years later. And <clears throat> I got involved with networking with Grace, as Tom alluded to. I, I get the privilege of, of being there and helping facilitate with, uh, with one of my close friends, Wes Tang, a job group. And we've gotten to watch so many people land that, uh, and we've gotten to hear so many landing stories that I think I've taken away the following high level learnings. The first and foremost is people want to help you. Um, people do look, they, they remember their transition. They, they, re, they know what it was like for themselves to have had a, a job transition and they, they want to help. <clears throat> and I think Wes and I both believe that networking is just God's way of speaking to you. He can speak to you through whomever he chooses. Um, it's just kind of your job to, to listen and to explore the doors that, that he presents to you and decide which one you want to open up. What I've noticed, just getting to participate in that group and try and be a helpful person to those that come through it is when people are able to share how we can help them. That's when they tend to get through the transition quickest. They might come to me and say, or come to the group and say, geez, I'm a learning and development guy. Um, I, I've got experience in retail and energy. Um, I don't really know what to do next. And those people are kind of hard to, to help. You know, everybody's in the room, everybody wants to help. God wants to speak to him. But I don't think we've given us simpletons enough to go on. So through these small group classes, through meetings like this, where you're learning where you might want to go to work, just give some people some examples. Um, like I said, I, I believe in my heart that people want to help you land. Nobody wants to see anybody in transition. Um, but at the same time, give them something to go on. You know, hi, my name's Wes. I'm a technology leader. My last company was Honeywell, and my next company, I'd really like to try the biomedical arena. Maybe a Medtronic would be a fit or anything similar. And you just leave it open and uh, try and be succinct and, and let be open to letting them help you. The other thing I've, I've noticed, so we, I don't keep very good tabs because not everybody tells me, but I think in the six years that I've been helping facilitate the networking with Grace Ming, I think we've seen 300 people. Um, and I'm super humbled to get to be part of that, even if it's from afar. But what I've always noticed is the willingness for those people to pay it forward. And I, I just, you know, I always think of the book of James when I think of this networking stuff. And I'm a, a stammering, soft-spoken guy, but my interpretation of the book of James is God's there to help you. Um, he's going to get you what you need. He's going to help provide for you. I think the way I read the book of James, though, is, is he wants you to live your life the way he would like you to live it. And that opens up more doors for you because he's listening to you as well as you to him. Um, you're all my thoughts and prayers. I, I don't want to see anybody in transition longer than they have to be. If I were to leave you with anything, just be succinct and be open and be willing to let people help you, whether they're friends, former colleagues, people at networking meetings that you don't know. I do think that networking can serve as a, a valuable way to get you through your transition. And uh, with that, I guess, like I said, you can always hop on our website if you wanted to try a networking with Grace Meeting. We're, we meet every Thursday, regardless of if there's one or a hundred, um, we go through it. And we just, we're not, 
no, you us as coaches, we're just here to try and help connect you. And I always think about it like it's a big room and God's going to speak to you through whomever he wants. And it might not be me. It might not be West Tang. It might be the person sitting right next to you. So with that, I pray for all of you. Thank you, Wes. So, Wes, one of the things that um, I remember uh, from the meetings and, and being around is that it, not everybody is prepared, um, but you really work hard to help them to get prepared uh, and to, to share as much as they can so people can help them. I think that's, I mean, that's a big critical thing um, that I've seen in, in the networking meetings is if you're willing or if the person is willing to be coached and to be helped, uh, they, they will get help. Um, and that, that's really a big, you know, if sometimes, but, um, but that's the patience great. that you and Wes have and the ability to communicate and to pull information out of people is, is critical. And I, I think you do that well. I, and so. That's kind of you. I always give, I give that credit to Wes Tang. I, I, <laughs> I, I do. I like to think of myself as the back office Wes, and he, he is he is just so gently attentive to listening to you. And he'd say, Tom, based on what you told me, what do you think about this? And he helps facilitate and get that meeting going. And and that I I do think he's a force of nature. Yeah. And uh, but but you 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 are right. I I get to watch that and watch him very gently pull. He doesn't do it in a commanding way or. A, I don't think people leave put off, but he, he teases out um, things, hopefully, that gets you a productive week of networking. Right. And I think even by watching uh, the uh, networking process, people really learn by osmosis almost. They just can't help but get the information that they need to go out and do it on a more regular basis. So I really, yeah, I really appreciate um, the group and having you there um, and to be able to recommend to people uh, to attend uh, just to get more involved with networking to be, to have, be able to practice in that way, I think mm -hmm. is critical in a lot of ways. So I appreciate of it very much. Thank you, Wes. Okay, with that, thank you, Wes. Uh, and with that, I will start to introduce Nancy Frosch, who, um, who has been in the coaching game for uh, a lot of years. I'm not gonna put a big number <laughs> on it, uh, but has been around. Uh, and uh, I've uh, actually I've had the benefit of hearing Nancy speak uh, and teach and uh, give me information that was useful in my job search and my transition. And uh, I really welcomed it. And uh, I think you're going to really enjoy hearing her speak tonight. What I would like to uh, depart to the audience is uh, ask questions through our chat session at the bottom of your um, uh, screen there. And type in your question and uh, uh, as it relates to the topic, I will interrupt and uh, and have Nancy uh, answer those. Uh, but um, you know, feel free to ask those questions, and uh, she's going to give you the best of her wisdom. So here you go, Nancy. It's yours. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Wes. I, I want to first echo everything that uh, Wes and Tom said. And networking is so important. That's where most jobs are jobs are filled. So. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about how to create a better resume, how to get the attention that you want from the, the people that you want to get the attention from. Um, so your resume needs to lead you to your career direction. I was in um, outplacement for a long time, working with people that had been laid off and, and they're stressed and it's like, I don't know, and so they just started throwing resumes out. Take some time to, to sit back and reflect on what your direction is. What's your professional brand? What is it? from your past that you enjoy doing, you wanna do more of, and what's marketable out there. So that's you wanna focus on. Um, it's, it's get that, that professional brand, career focus, whatever you wanna call it, and list all the things that you want you wanna do more of, what you enjoy doing. Um, the other thing that I wanna make sure that you know, there's no right or wrong way to write a resume. It's whatever promotes you the best for your direction. Um, I've had clients that they come and they say, oh, I'm so tired to look at my resume because I've had 10 people looking and they give me 10 different, different answers. So every time you get advice from people, you got to think, okay, is this important for me? Is this going to help my resume look better for where I want to go, for the audience that I'm looking at? Um, and it, a key thing is that it needs to be visually appealing. They take five to seven seconds 
to, uh, to look at it first time through. So they're not gonna read it word for word. The only people that are gonna read it word for word is you and probably your, maybe your career coach. Um, but it's gotta be quickly scannable for key points. The key terms, the buzzwords, you should have in there at least three times um, because with the applicant tracking system, that's, they're, they're scanning for the key keywords for the industry that you're looking at for your career focused professional brand. So no complete sentences. Then you have, when you have complete sentences, then you have all these filler words that are not important. Quick bullets to the point, okay? And be careful of using internal jargon. Sometimes when people are in a company for a long time, a large, large company, they, they don't know whether the jargon they have in there is for their industry or their, their particular company and no one else he, um, knows what they're talking about. So, so it's good to have someone outside your company take a look at it and they may say, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so make sure you get that out so, so people can understand it. And it should be able to be read by people within your field and also HR people. They're HR looking for the, for the key terms, but it, the sentences, the statements need to make sense for them. Margins typically think of it as, as a picture frame. So you typically want like about one inch margin around. And sometimes you shift that just a little bit so that so the first page and the second page are cut off at a right, right time. Somewhere people got the idea that it needs to be, resume needs to be one page. So I've seen people have like an eight point font and these near little margins, they go, oh, I'm so glad I got it on one page. But no one wants to look at it. So most resumes of people that have been in the field for a while in their industry, in their direction, are about a page and a half. And I'm not concerned whether it's one page or two page, but use the space that you need to say what you gotta say. Anytime I see a resume over two pages, they've got all this extra stuff that's not important to where they wanna go. Um, so we'll talk about that, but, but typically a page and a half. Um, the only one page resumes are ones that are new in the field. Uh, they're a recent college graduate, don't have a whole lot of experience with where they wanna go. So, um, and then font size, anyway, between 10 and 11 or 12 point font, somewhere within there. And in, again, you kind of shift that a little bit so it fits on, the, on a, a good break between first and second. Um, sometimes 12 might be a little big for more of a technical positions. I think of that sometimes for um, more admin um, positions, but between 10, 11, or 12, somewhere within there. Um, font styles used to be, all resumes used to be Times New Roman. And the, what's called sand, the, the serif, the ones with tails, don't get picked up in the applicant tracking system as well. So um, you wanna use a sans serif. The ones without tails are normally the best, but you wanna make sure that it's easy to read, looks professional, don't, don't use a real casual looking uh, font. Um, and besides it not looking professional, it may not get picked up well with the applicant tracking system either, um, but not the, the light, the compact. Lately, I've been using more of the Calibri or the Tahoma, and I, don't, I may not be pronouncing that right, but um, you know, I uh, Googled best resume fonts and there were so many different opinions. Um, one said not Times New Roman because it's too compact. Another one says Arial is too overused. It won't stand out. So, but just make sure it's very easily, easily read. It's more the spread out letters letter, rather than the more compact ones. So just keep that in mind. Um, eliminate information that's not important. It's not a, replace, a police report, it's not everything you've done. It needs to, again, to leave that focus. What's important to where you wanna go? When you have so much other stuff in there, then they can't see the important things, again, because they're scanning it. Um, everything needs to have a purpose. If it doesn't have a purpose, take it out, or it doesn't add anything. Um, so it could be like, you know, dates or places of, you know, a specific class you took, um, details not important to your career direction, um, the old outdated information that's really low level and not as important, but we'll talk about some of that. Um, any questions so far, Tom? So far, I don't have any, but okay. uh, I'll let you know. Thanks. All right. Feel free to, to jump in if, if there's anything in the chat. I will. Um, 
you want to, it's really easy to be negative in a resume without, without meaning to. Um, so having old dates, you know, seeing 1990s or anything before 2010, I would say, take it out. Um, but we'll talk about how to get that older information in there without having the dates. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about the education too. Um, employment gaps. So if you if you've just got a gap and it doesn't if you just use the years then it doesn't show up then I do it that way but there's other formats that you can use that that um, that don't show the employment gap as much um, and I've seen people who they'll put uh, you know St Cloud State University did not graduate you know it's just right out there so so you could do other things like uh, two years or um, you know, list the courses rather than saying did not graduate. Okay, is there a question there, Tom? Couple questions. Yeah, one was mine just saying, uh, put your questions here. Oh, okay, so, all right, okay. <laughs> so, so one of the questions is if, if you worked in a company from 1995 to 215, what do you put? Yeah, we'll talk about that previous experience section. Yep. Um, and you don't, if you worked at a company way back in the 90s, you don't have to put at the old date. You could start it at a more recent date because there's a point where it's like, is it important that you were there, you know, 20 years versus, you know, 10 years? Um, so, and sometimes that's, a, that's almost a negative thing that you were at one company for a really long time and you, you look like you're kind of stifled. Um, but let me know as we get further if that doesn't it doesn't answer your question. Um, so let's start with the different sections. Uh, your name, definitely. Your phone number, your email, your LinkedIn URL, and I hope you personalize that. Make sure you personalize your URL right, so you don't have those long numbers and letters at the end. Address. Do you put your address in? Do you not put their, your address in? It's kind of at that point where I say it, it depends. I would never put your street address in because they're not gonna mail you anything in today's world. Um, but let's say you, um, you wanna relocate or you're willing to relocate wherever, I take the address out altogether because it's almost a negative that you're in Minneapolis and you're looking for a position in you know, San Francisco or something, okay? If let's say you, um, you um, maybe live down in Chanahasset, but you're in an apartment, you're willing to move wherever um, within the metro area, then I put Minneapolis. So it's again, it leads to your, your focus, okay? Um, let me know if anything doesn't make sense here. Summary statement, I'm, I'm seeing, I just wanna explain first the difference between the summary versus an objective. Summary is really going forward. This is what, I'm, what I can offer you that's important to my career direction. An objective is like, this is what I want. And it, they usually don't say much at all. Seeking a high growth position in a progressive company doesn't say anything and they don't care about that. So it's, it's more, summary is more important. The only time that you need objective is if your resume doesn't lead you to where you wanna go then you might need both. But a summary just, it's almost like an introduction of book. What am I gonna read more about? So where your experience is, that leads you to where you wanna go. Your key, key skills and expertise, that's important to your career direction. Um, you, I think of the summary as three parts. One is your general skill area, or may or may not be an actual title because a title may, may lock you in. Um, but more of an, an area. And then kind of find three little areas that better define that skill area. And I'll show you some examples that will help you with that. And then your interpersonal skills. What in your personality makes you good at what you do? So for where you want to go, what are the key personality traits that you have that's important to, to that direction? Um, here's one and my face is right in the way here. Um, so here's a sample one. So just to give you a little background, this um, individual, uh, he's in his mid 40s. He's got a bachelor's degree in um, mechanical engineering. Um, he's been in 
uh, med device company for the last 14 years. This is an actual summary of a resume. And um, he wants to get out of the med device industry, but wants to stay in more the government um, regulated industry because he has some experience in a previous company um, that's also a regulated industry. So, um, yeah, so the general area is program slash project manager. Now, one other thing I want to make sure that I want to um, point out is that you want to have a space before and after the slash because if they um, if if they scan applicant tracking system for project manager, it's not going to show up. What's going to show you? But if they scan for program project manager, it will. But you got to separate them off. Okay, so anytime you do a slash, you want to have a space before and after. You a little bit change the um, grammar rules that your eighth grade English teacher taught you <laughs> a little bit, just to make it more, more visual. Okay, so program project manager is key, is the key direction. And then three areas, strong background in process improvement, data analysis, and as a technical liaison. Those are the key things that he wants to do more of that he has experience in and feels that is important as a program project manager. And then he wanted to add experience with supply chain management, manufacturing process, information technology, and regulated industries. So those are all really key terms within that field. And then interpersonal skills that he thought was important to where he wants to go, known by others, detailed planner, strong executor, and reasoned decision maker. So key things, and this is really his opinion, so down below, and we'll talk about that, he needs to prove that. Uh, let me show you another one. Whoops. Okay. Um, this, this individual was a, has a bachelor's degree in medical technology and MBA in healthcare. He's been in medical, 16 years of medical lab experience where he got into leading, managing people and he really does not want to manage people. He wants to do more of the operations, the project process management. So we're really downplaying the people management, again, leading them to his focus. Healthcare med medical laboratory leader with background in operations, process improvement, and quality assurance. Knowledgeable in laboratory and healthcare re regulatory compliance. And then here's his interpersonal is known by colleagues as able to create innovative solutions to problems, lead projects, and develop efficient systems. So it's yeah, somewhat interpersonal skills, somewhat not. Um, but this, th these are the things that he felt was very important to where he wants to go. Um, all right. So if there aren't any questions, another area that may be important for some positions is this um, software experience or technical experience um, or um, uh, expertise, some people just call it, but it's key terms within their field. So if it's important, typically it goes like right below the, um, the summary statement. It could go on the second page if it's more of a leadership role and it's not quite as important, but important to have it in there. So it just pulls it all together. HR loves this because they can see um, all, the, all the key terms right there. Makes it easy for them to see. Okay, so the opinions, you, the, the summary objective, uh, the computer technical key skills, those are your opinions. So you need to prove it down in the work experience or down in the other, in the other sections. Prove Nancy. what you say above. Yeah. So, um, in your when you're doing that list, uh, is it appropriate to to mix technical and management skills and other skills in there to just to have a full array sure. of skills? Yeah. Then you would open it up rather than call it software experience. You call it technical experience. Um, so maybe someone who's more in a manufacturing, they would have some of the you know the manufacturing piece along with the software. Um, it's just the key terms within your field. Sometimes when I see a really huge list of what they call, um, you know, key, key skills or whatever, they call them different things, it's kind of like everything they've done. Be careful with that. It's like, it's, 
you know, do you really want to analyze budgets? Well, I can do it. So make sure it's not things that you can do, but ones that you enjoy doing and leads you to career direction. Did I answer their question, Tom? I, I think so. I think okay, okay. Yeah. So, you know, keep in mind, these are your opinions. These down here, the work experience, the education, you know, previous means all that is facts. So, so you don't want any opinions in there. So I've seen somewhere um, learned whatever within the work experience, like, well, that's your opinion that you, that you have learned that. So keep it all facts. So let's talk a little bit about the experience section. Um, so don't, some people say, well, you know, it's a common title. They know what I did. Not, to, not necessarily that same title may be common, but it may be split up in different, different uh, companies. So in a, in a smaller company, you're gonna have a broader range of things where a larger company, your scope will be much, much smaller. So make sure you've got those in there and you need all those key buzzwords for the applicant tracking system. Uh, use bullets to prove your experience, not um, complete sentences. And think of your bullets as your action and results if you can. And the, res you know, the quantitative results is really best. Those numbers really jump out. Um, percentages are really the best because any size company can deal with a percentage. You did whatever, which decreased whatever by X percent. You know, dollar sign, sometimes I look at dollar sign, you know, I, I don't know if that's a large amount of savings for that particular position or not. Um, so be careful with that, but quantify if you can your action. The other way you can talk about results is which was commended by management or commended by uh, the customer. So again, use the industry buzzwords. So um, avoid using, this is one of my pet peeves, action verbs that are too general or not, don't really say anything. You know, worked, that's so general, it doesn't say one thing. And assisted, so does that mean when you say you assisted doing something, does that mean they were doing the work and you got the coffee? So it, it doesn't say what you did. Um, so you could, you could use other terms, um, supported if it's more of an administrative position or you did whatever with the so-and-so manager. Um, so you wanna start strong and then kind of, if you need to wimp out at the end, okay? So action verbs important to your career direction. So let's say you're, this is back at that program project, project manager. He would have terms there like managed, implemented, led, liaison between, um, analyzed, project managed. So those are gonna be right at the left-hand side margin. We read left to right. So the words on the left-hand side are gonna be the more important ones or should be the most important because that's our, where our eye is, is drawn to. And back at that list of, um, software experience or key, um, key experience, whatever you want to call it, the ones on the left-hand side margin should be the, the mo most important ones. Um, there's another one who is a writer editor and she would have terms like wrote, proofread, coordinated, created, okay, terms within your field. Um, the one who was a healthcare medical laboratory leader, optimized, implemented, created, analyzed, collaborated led operations. You see, he doesn't want to do the people management. So he really downplayed uh, that whole part. Okay. Um, this is just an example of um, one of the, the experience. So above that would be his experience. I'll show you a whole resume towards the end. Um, but his title is IT supply chain project program manager. And then a lot of times it's nice to have one overall responsibility statement. So kind of an umbrella statement response for creating, executing strategy to monitor accuracy of demand and supply planning data. So that was kind of the overall, what he was position. And then down here is kind of breaking it up as far as his accomplishment, what he actually did. Trained and led, mapped and analyzed. And you see how those numbers jump out at you? Reduced data errors by up to 77% within one year. Okay, um, 
Any questions so far on the experience? Or anything uh, else? Nothing new yet. Okay, all right. Um, let's look at education. So I think of education as typically two parts. One is your degree, you know, so this one administrative certificate and an admin certificate could be nine months, it could be two years. So if it's two years, put it out there. Um, and the college and the city and state, it's just, it's, it just is common to have the city and state on there too, because it adds credibility to it, especially if they don't know if it's not a common college here. Um, I would only put the year of your your graduate year or years you went there if it was recent. So let's say you're, you know, 20, 23 years old, you've got a recent recent degree and your experience only goes back about, you know, four years. So it's important to put your your date here to show, okay, that's why he she only has um, four years of, of experience there. Okay. Um, but they use that to kind of say how old, you know, figure, decide how much, how old you probably are. Let's see, graduate this year, he's probably this old. Um, and then they're really key in on that additional coursework. So additional courses that are important to where you want to go. This one is more administrative support. And so having that PowerPoint, the Excel, you know, those kind of things, these are all key ones. Um, I would take out what I call the HR fluff classes, all the ones that you're required to take to, um, you know, by the company just to check off the boxes. Um, but ones that are most important. Now, if the course was like, you know, a lot of hours, I would put it in there. Um, so Excel one, two, and three, it was three different Excel classes. So we just called it one, two, and three, but 40 hours. That's like a semester long class. So these other ones are probably, you know, two hour classes, eh, don't, don't put it in. If this is kind of the key, is if they're gonna think it's, it's more than what it was and take out the, the number of hours, okay? So let me show you one more. Uh, this one, so you put your highest level or most pertinent education first. So MBA, um, supply chain operations, minor finance, and then, the um, the university. I've seen people flip it around and they'll bold the university and it's like, what's most important? Is it your degree or the university? So you wanna highlight your degree more than the university. And then the BS, um, if you got a master's degree and you also got an associate's degree, take out the associate's degree, it doesn't, doesn't add anything because um, you got the higher level degree. And then here again is additional coursework, again, shows that ongoing ed education, ongoing training. Uh, and these are all pretty, pretty long-term classes and they're all pretty important to where he wants to go. So 40 hours, 16 hours, so, um, okay. Other sections, um, you know, volunteer and community involvement. I would only add these in if it's pertinent to where you wanna go. So does it show leadership? Does it show additional experience in their, in their field? So if you were a block walker for the um, United Way, I would not put it in, it's not a, a real big deal. Um, for me, I put in, um, uh, I volunteer to co-lead one of the a jobs transition group here locally. And I put, I add that in there. Um, because it's in my field. Um, I volunteer in other areas um, that are in career management and I put, put those in. Um, and then professional affiliations. So um, for example, I've been a president, board member in different positions within Minnesota Career Development Association. That's in my field. So that is important. So it's ones again that lead you to where you wanna go. And you might put in, I don't think I have an example of that, but you might put in the, um, the name of the organization. Um, you might need to spell it out because for me, people don't all, always know MCDA. So spell it out. And you could put in parentheses um, the, the acronym for it too, if that's very common. Um, and then your, your, um, 
your titles, if you were just member, you could put member comma six years or something like that. And it doesn't matter that you're not there anymore. You're just gonna put the number of years you were involved in it. Um, let me show you, I'm going to stop share and share an exam, uh, resume if I can do this, Tom. Okay, Nancy, while you do that, uh -huh. uh, there was one more question. Okay. So uh, in regard to like a Six Sigma, uh, do you put the six, put six Sigma or do you put as a skill or just a certificate? I would do both. Okay. I mean, if you have the experience or you've got the, the training, definitely put that in that you've got the certification, but, but you'd wanna put it in um, also if it's key in your um, bullets, you know, utilizing Six Sigma methodologies. Um, so you've actually utilized it or within a Six Sigma environment, um, those kind of things. As many areas as it fits, then, in other words. I'm sorry, what? As in every area that it fits, basically. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's key. So this is, whoops, this is not the one I wanted to share. Uh, okay. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. So this is just a basic um, administrative resume. So we don't have her, you know, just Bloomington, Minnesota. You know, she is interested in staying within that geographic region. She has a home down there. She doesn't want to, you know, take a position in Anoka or Cambridge, but within that area. So, um, and then her summary, Administrative professional with experience utilizing software, supporting customers, and resolving administrative issues inquiries. So for the business she's looking for, that's important. And also areas that she enjoys doing and wants to do more of. Then her interpersonal skills, no but peers and management as detail-oriented, organized and willing to support others wherever is needed to get the job done. So which are really key for an admin position. For the individual who is a um, healthcare medical lab leader, would be totally different, okay? Um, and then here's her software experience. If you notice over here on the right, on the left-hand side, these are supposedly the key, um, you know, PowerPoint, Excel. I would not put um, Microsoft Suite because if you do and you don't have the word PowerPoint, you don't have the, the word Excel, your resume may be um, not picked up by the applicant tracking system. So they don't know if that includes access or what. So, so list them separately. So, um, so software experience makes it much easier to see when it's in columns versus a whole list. Don't make them work because they're not gonna do that. And then down here under professional experience, um, I just shove city and states and the, and the dates over the right-hand side column because it's not as important. It needs to be there, but it's not as important. Again, we key in on the left-hand side um, area. That's where the key point is. Um, and she's got her, uh, her titles, um, companies, titles, responsibility statement um, right here. And see, she quantifies it. So it's like, oh gosh, she was supporting, you know, 300 employees, um, which, is, which is big. If it was, you know, five employees, you might leave that off. And if you look, you see all the key action verbs down along the side, manage, created, wrote, created. And I move, move around the created. It's a little, gets a little much on the same, same verb, um, processed, maintained. Um, and you see here, right in here, you'll see the different, she's proving Quark Express, constant contact, PowerPoint. So she's proving what she says she's got experience in up there. Okay, and same with the, the other positions. Okay, and there's no gap. She might've been, there might've been a gap of, you know, maybe she ended this job in January of 20 and she didn't get this job until December. So it was like 11 months gap, but it doesn't show up. I think there's different, different um, viewpoints, whether you put the months um, along with the years in, yeah. Um, I guess I'm indifferent 
um, which way you do, whichever, I would say whichever is more advantageous for you. So Nancy? Yeah. Um, in the, when you're um, looking at your current position versus past positions or mm -hmm. um, the use of tense as it relates to- Yeah, uh, that's uh, a really good question. So I just always put everything in past tense because if it's in per, in, if you know, you're still working and it's like, well, I'm done with this. So that's in past tense and I'm still doing this. So that's, you know, present. So it gets really cumbersome. So just simplify it and just put it all in past tense. Yeah, really good question. Um, and if you notice, you know, they're not sentences, but they start with a capital letter, they all end with a period because it shows you're done with that point, you move on to the next one. Any other questions that come up, Tom? Nope, that, that's it okay. so far. Okay, yeah. And the other thing I wanna point out is if you look, you want us, them to see the grouping. So you got your summary and then two spaces in between, software experience, two spaces, and then that whole professional experience is one space between the, the positions. So you want them to make it, make it look as easily, easily to read as, as possible. Um, and then, you know, I just do a simple heading on the second page. It's not as important as it used to be because, you know, very rarely you're going to give them a, a hand copy, a, a hard copy of a resume, um, unless you go in for an interview and, and they don't have one, you give, give them there. But um, I think it just looks a little sharp having the, the heading on the second page. And if you look, you've got that nice, um, nice margin along the side on all four sides, except on the second page. Um, so this is a previous experience. So she went back to 2012 and she's got, she wants to let them know that she's got more experience besides just the recent 10 years, but you don't want those old, those old dates. And it could have been, in fact, I think it was the same company, but you know, it's not a selling point that it was all the same company. So additional customer support, scheduling, problem analysis and resolution experience within a large service company. So that's all that's important from back there. Some people, they'll just list the companies and titles if that's important, but it's, again, it differs and people hate it when I say that. If there's no right or wrong way to do it, whatever it makes you look the best. If you're looking at a large size company, you've got some big name companies, then throw those company names in. Okay, and here is the education that we looked at before. So is there questions on this resume at all? Right now I'm not seeing any, but oh, here comes okay. one. Um, so do you not group the time at the company or split, or do you split them up at each position? How's the best way to present your uh, yeah. experience in, in a company? You know, I mean, does it matter that you were at the company for, 12 years or whatever it was, it just, it's, it's not a selling point. And that goes back to the, to the, the question is, you know, wh why do you, why it, it's, it's not, it doesn't add anything to put the entire time you were at that company. I would just put it up for the, for the positions. It's like, oh, she moved up um, pretty rapidly in this organization. So the dates of the individual position is, is more important than the number of years. Um, really, companies only expect you to stay in one company three to four years. And any longer than that, they think you're outdated, um, not contributing anything more in, which is really sad. But so it's not a big plus like it used to be 20 years ago that you were at the same company for a long time. Okay. So okay. I'm guessing there's more questions coming up here. Oh yeah, there's, there's a, how do you manage fractional positions? Um, I'm not sure I understand that. So the idea of uh, someone who's more of a, uh, doesn't have a single position, but has uh, many other positions. So like yeah. several positions at a time. So a fractional uh, CFO or a fractional, um, you know, management consultant or, you know, that type of position. Yeah. You mean, so you did several different roles at one time. Is that kind of it? Yeah, you could do it for, you could be doing uh, the same role for several different companies at the same time. 
Oh, oh, like a contract with a contractor with several yeah, different yeah. contractors. Yeah. yeah, you don't want it to look like I mean, I've seen resume where they list like about 20 different jobs and that makes you look like a job hopper. So I would hopefully it's with, you know, one contractor or, you know, a couple of different ones. And so I would list the contractor as a company. And then within the responsibility statement, if you did some work for some some key companies that are well known in the area, I would list those in responsibility statement and the bullets. It could be each project, but it's more. I mean, especially engineers, they want to group it as I was on this project and that project and that project. But think of each bullet as a skill that you're proving. Um, so, um, and you can, rather than just call yourself a contractor, you want to be more specific. So it, so, so it, it, it's there for a purpose again. So if you're looking for an, you know, an engineering position, you could call it, you know, engineering contractor or, um, so it leads you to where you want to go. It, it says a little bit more than just contractor. Did I answer that question? Well, you answered it for the contract position. I think if someone's a, um, a fractional CFO or something that they're more of oh. a, an independent business. Yeah. Uh, and they're working so, for multiple other businesses at the same right. time. So you could use this, the name, you know, John Smith and Associates because that's your name. Right. So you could use that and then you know, give yourself a title for what you did um, and then list, you know, the different, the different roles that you did that are important to where you want to go again. So if you're looking for a CEO position, you talk about budget, you talk about leading groups, you talk about, you know, the, the key things that are important in where you want to go again. So it's a very unique type of resume. Yeah, it's yeah. Not something that you're going to see. I, I think it's more you know, know, a whole up. lot more creative with. Yeah, and you can. I mean, I think it sounds like the individual is in the position where he can kind of play with his title, and and I would do that too. I don't know if these were the specific titles that this person was given, but they're very clear as far as what they did. Um, so if you, you know, if they gave you some, some strange title that no one in their right mind outside of your department would know what they're talking about, you need to play with that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so, so you can definitely, um, adapt that if it feels better to you, you could do a pr production assistant slash than the title they gave you. If that helps. Right. Okay. Um, I'm thinking there's more questions. Yeah, there's more. Uh, okay. so there's a question out there. Um, you, you talked about other styles uh, and examples. Oh, yeah. At, so, uh, are you going to share some of those at this time? Um, if you give me a minute, I can um, pull one up. So the one I was talking about is called a functional resume, which is the second most common resume um, out there. But I would only use it if there's a reason to. Um, so um, if you know you've got gaps, if the older experience is more important to where you want to you want to go, um, those would be some reasons to do a functional one. And I'm pulling a sample up right now. I didn't think of um Kitty one bear with me. Um, This is a sample of one that um, she actually has a, um, she had a lot of experience, but it was more in a volunteer role in her school, in her kids' school. Okay. Um, she, so it was, she was able to pull this stuff. I mean, it really ended up to be a great, great resume. So if you look back, so here, the summary is the same. Then professional experience, if you notice, it's just the bullets. And it's broke out into three areas. So three areas that are important to where you want to go and ones that you've got experience in. So marketing, public relations, strategy planning, and leadership. So back here is your work experience, companies, titles, um, and dates. 
Um, so you notice, I mean, she did some freelance work, some paid, and, and more recently it was more of the volunteer stuff, but really some great experience. So we broke it out, work history, volunteer history. Then the education is the same, professional association. Here's an example of that, the professional associations. Society for Technical Communications, member eight years. Um, but so this, this one, the very first one, plan and implement it, could have been something she did five years ago, but it can be the first one. So you can move these around. You can move the sections around. Let's say she's looking for a position that's a little bit more strategic planning. She can move that first. Um, and you can move these bullets around. It gets HR a little uncomfortable because they can't see where you did what. And it doesn't allow you to put use this in a lot of the online applications because you're cut and pasting in their format. So you're going to also need a chronological resume if you do a functional one, but it can be really strong. So any questions on the functional resume? Could, could you see using the functional resume after you have the in, in the interview type of setting sure. and the uh, and the other one to get in the door or yeah, if you need to do the, you know, the online application into their format, uh, if you can attach one, um, then you can attach a functional one. But this one can, can look really strong, but just so you know, it kind of draws red flags. But you see how you can downplay the, the gaps in employment, um, the, you know, that this was volunteer versus, uh, versus paid work. But she's got some great experience. Um, that she really got involved in, in the kids at school. She was uh, at home with, with kids and um, look, looks great. I mean, she's got some big numbers and yeah. Anything mm -hmm. else on the functional resume, Tom? Um, well, going back, there's a question that uh, if someone works for the same company for 25 years, how, how, what yeah. is the best way to break out the experience at each or time at each job or? Yeah, I would do similar to what was on that resume on that um, um, the ad admin resume. Right. We'll just go back to that one. Um, and you don't need to go back 25 years. I would go back, you know, whoops, that's not the right one. Let me close it out. Um, yeah, are you seeing the Lynn Sample one? Yes. Yeah. So she was at Anderson from 2012 to present. I mean, I played with these dates. Um, and then just do a previous experience, only what's important back there. But you don't, yeah, I would not do the old dates 25 years ago. Because yeah. that would be going back to 97. And just having 90s in there looks, looks bad. So, and there's, you know, that old stuff is, there's probably a lot of outdated things in there as far as like software or doing things, you know, a hard copy versus computer. And there's um, things that is not important, but let's say you're a production manager and you started out on the, on the production floor, that's really good that you worked your way up and you have that experience there. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, over 25 years, um, but, but um, more of that previous experience. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. Other questions? Right now, that answers us up to date. Okay. Uh, let me go back to... Uh, okay, so I think we talked about all these different or showed examples of all these different sections. Um, Oh, this I showed you. Yeah, the big question now that people are saying is, you know, do I send a cover letter? And I hear different things. People say, oh, I never send a cover letter. I hear HR recently say, you know, I, I don't have time to read cover letters. But this is my thought, is if you're applying to a position blindly, you know, on Monster or Indeed or whatever, and you're competing with 50 or 100 other, other people, you need to do whatever to get yourself above the masses. And sending a cover letter can be one of those things. 
So I would always send a cover letter if you can. Usually you can attach the resume, attach the cover letter, and I would do that. So that allows you to really key in on, on specific things that's really important for that position. So by using the, um, the job posting, you can see, I mean, that's as far as you know at this point of what's important. You're assuming that this individual thinks that same, those the same things are important. So you would add those to your, your cover letter. So basic business letter format, um, you know, highlight, like I said, key background experience for that particular position. So I think of it as three sections uh, or three paragraphs. So the first paragraph is really why you're writing, you know, what position, where you saw it. Um, you could add something about why you're looking due to relocation in the Minneapolis area, uh, due to downsizing by 50%, uh, due to um, office relocation. You know, if it's something like that, you can add those in. Okay. Second paragraph is what it's, where's the connection? They've got this position in this company. You've got this background. Where's the connection? Where's the fit? Okay. So that is all I have. Any other questions I haven't answered? Yeah. So Nancy, um, uh -huh. on the idea of the cover letter, um, yeah. as it relates to an ATS system, generally speaking, there it's a two-part uh, um, upload in that part in that case you upload your resume into the ats and you have the ability to add attachment uh yes. which should be the attached cover letter correct yeah yeah the the cover letter doesn't go through the applicant tracking system correct so and and be aware of you know companies using that because most large mid-sized companies will will use it so make sure you've got keywords key terms spat, splattered throughout your resume. Um, I heard someone say two to three times that would go for LinkedIn too. So um, any other questions? Uh, we just have a new one here. Um, okay. Should we, oops, it moved on me while I was reading. <laughs> Let's see, should we put bullet points with percents or numbers in the middle paragraph of a cover letter? Uh, I'm working on one right now, trying not to make too many, it looked too busy looking. Uh, sure. So she's trying to leave enough white space so it, and doesn't duplicate the resume. So what's your advice on how to be succinct in the cover letter without- if it's, it's, Yeah, if it leads to where you wanna go, if it's important to what, what you've done, and as we're talking, I'm going to try and pull up a sample cover letter here. Um, give me a second or two. Uh, okay. Um, so this is just one sample of um, a cover letter kind of using that format that I mentioned. And Okay, just business letter format. I mean, this uses a headline that is the same on her, her resume. Um, or the, yeah. And then, um, I mean, putting the address in probably doesn't make sense. You're not mailing it. You're going to attach it. And maybe just say selection committee. So here's the, the three parts. Due to reduction staff by 20% of my current company, I'm seeking new opportunity to utilize my, my experience. So why you're writing. What's the connection? You're not going to have these words in, in, in italics, but yeah, I would say about four bullets. So my background, if you would be very beneficial, the position include, and again, you see those strong, managed, resolved, supervised, directed. And, and it's not like, I don't think of it as pulling certain bullets from your resume, but it may be uh, combining things. Okay, I need to um, talk about my, you know, my coordination experience. Um, so they pulled together a couple of different positions that they had, manage, coordinate, and organize special project within two manager groups. If you get too detailed, it's not gonna get read. They're gonna scan it, okay? And I would not do a paragraph because they're, they're not gonna see it. And then the third paragraph is really what's the next step. I think everything stands out pretty well in there. I mean, that would, yep. for someone scanning it, they'd be able to, pick choose what they wanted to look at yeah 
The other thing, if you have a paragraph for that middle paragraph, then you're saying I did this and I, 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 it's just, it's boring and it's, yeah, it's too cumbersome. Again, keywords. Okay. Okay. So the next question um, that I think that answered that one. Um, okay. So um, recently retired person uh, wants to go back and, but doesn't want to go back full time, wants to do part time type of work. Um, yeah. Any special tips that way for that type well, of resume, I guess? So. Yeah, I would not put on your resume only looking for part-time work. I mean, you're, what you're doing is you're putting in a butt and it's been, so my thought is, is you wanna sell yourself. Your goal is to get in front of them. So, and then once you get in front of them, then maybe, you know, are you willing to work four days a week? Are you willing to, you know, um, to, to start out full time and then back down to part time. Um, but maybe you want to look at more contract firms if you only want part time. Um, right. Is that, but, but I wouldn't state it. If they, if they don't state part time, I'm, I would not say it in the cover letter or the, or the resume. This sounds like a really good opportunity for networking, though. Um, yes, so than, exactly. You know, job yeah. applications. I mean, you're really looking for specific types of yeah. roles and specific yeah. Yeah. industries. You see so. whether he's technical or. No, it doesn't. It just. Okay. There's a lot of great things. technical uh, contract firms around. You can just Google sure. that. Um, so take a look at those. Yeah. And might be an opportunity to, to check out networking with Grace and. Uh, and uh, see what they can do to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let let people know what you're doing. Right. Um, and you know that summary statement that I showed you; those are good introduction, starting point for an introduction statement. So really, your resume, your LinkedIn, your 30 second introduction statement, um, everything should go to that cohesive brand. Um, that's really key. Um, so it's it's interesting. The number of people that you see every day, your neighbors, your friends, your relatives, people you see in church or community events or whatever, they don't really have that good an idea what you do. So make sure you let them know. Right. You got to thank you on your uh, your uh, combining the uh, the uh, and melding uh, bullet points together to create uh, something uh, that's more descriptive for a cover letter. So that uh, that oh, you good. did a good job there, apparently. So. Great. Anything else? I'm missing anything. Um, but yeah, what I, you know, a few key things, and I think I pressed into this again and again about taking time to figure out what you want to do um, before you write your resume and your resume to lead to where you want to go. Um, that's very key before you start throwing things out there. Um, so um, I like the point that you made at the, at, uh, in Proverbs about being ready. You know, that goes, that really goes back to um, what I've been talking about, you know, pulling your marketing materials together before you get out there. So your LinkedIn, your resume, your, your direction, your focus, everything before you start throwing out there. So you, you come across like, you know, what you, what you're talking about in networking meetings and when you apply for positions and in interviews. Yep. It makes total sense. Yeah. So feel free to, um, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, but I don't connect with people I don't know. Um, so just let let me know when you um, ask to connect uh, that you were on the uh, on this the the crossroads uh, group. Very good. Well, uh, Nancy, that was uh, extremely informative, and uh, uh, I really enjoyed uh, you know talking being being able to interact with you on this because it, it uh, helped me get my thoughts together. Uh, uh, so it, it really, oh, good. it was very useful for me. So I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. That's my goal. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So um, I'll have you on share your screen and then right. uh, I'll uh, share mine then. Yeah. So again, thank you for being here tonight. We do appreciate it. And uh, uh, Grant, great presentation. Hopefully everyone got something out of it. Okay, so uh, right now I will share my screen with you. Um, just give me a second to do so. There we go.
go. So welcome to Crossroads. Uh, I'm uh, going to go through a little bit of what Crossroads offers with you, for you, um, and uh, you'll uh, but it, hopefully have an opportunity to to really um, shine, or uh, I'll shine some light on some of the things that we do well and uh, that you could probably prosper from. So. Um, as a part of this seminar, you will receive, uh, uh, if you have, if you, your first time, you'll receive this, this book on how long, oh Lord, how long, it's a uh, book of devotionals. Um, and uh, as we uh, talked about in the beginning of the, it, uh, one of those areas that sometimes getting right uh, includes uh, being able to really focus on on, on who you are and what you are all about. And I, I really do believe that this puts you in the right frame of mind. So uh, these devotionals should help. So um, look forward to that. Uh, Dale uh, does a great job in that. So um, Minnesota Crossroads, our actual website uh, can be accessed at mncrossroads.com. Uh, and it, uh, it, you probably have experience with that website because you had to register for this webinar. Uh, but there's lots of details in, in that web uh, in the website. Uh, and let's say, for instance, we have uh, we have uh, people throughout the uh, Twin Cities areas posting jobs on our job board. Uh, the unique thing about our job board is there's a contact person with every job. So um, if you're interested in going out there and looking uh, for uh, what uh, it seems to be a great opportunity, but you still have some questions, you have someone to contact. So our job board uh, helps you with that. Um, there's many things on our website for job seekers um, and, uh, and employers alike. So, um, you know, check it out, give it a browse. There's many things on there. Like for instance, what we're gonna talk about um, is some of the locations in which we are. Uh, when we do go back to on-site meetings, uh, hopefully sometime in the near future. Um, we have three locations in which we have meetings. Uh, the primary or the original uh, in Needham Prairie at Grace Church. Um, uh, the one in which uh, I've been located out of uh, for the last uh, eight, 10 years, uh, Woodbury Lutheran Church uh, in Woodbury. Uh, and our newest uh, location in Arden Hills at North Heights Lutheran Church um, you can check them out on our website and see for details. Once we do go live, um, we're not live right now, so um, you might be able to go there for uh, church services, uh, and, but uh, right now we're not doing anything live on site. So mostly uh, through our collaborations here uh, with our webinars and other things that we offer through the website. So <clears throat> weekly opportunities. I think we talked um, a little bit about it, uh, networking with Grace, um, and uh, it meets every Thursday morning online. Uh, you can access um, and, and get registered through our website. Um, and uh, Russ, Wes Roper and Wes Tang uh, lead the group as we allude, as it's been uh, discussed already, uh, and uh, they do a great job. Um, so I highly recommend you check them out if you're. If you're new to uh, networking, I think it's a must uh, because they'll get they'll, it's a good primer and you'll be ready to go once you're you're there. Uh, if you're uh, even if you're not new and you're looking to expand your uh, contacts, um, networking with Grace is for you. So uh, check networking with Grace out; it will be um, highly beneficial. I highly recommend it. Um, so one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. Many times we have uh, resume. Uh, that we're working on and we don't know exactly what we're, we want to do effectively. Um, so you could actually go on and try to get coaching through our website. Um, let's say you have an interview coming up that you're not real certain you're going to knock it out of the park and you really could use a little more help with that. Um, check out our coaching online. Um, so anything you can think of generally related to the job search um, you can find some coaching, uh, hopefully, or could use some coaching in some way. So check out our one-on-one -on -one coaching opportunities through our website. Um, now, this job transition uh, game is not always as accessible as we made it sound tonight. 
And uh, you might go through a few failures here and now and then, and you could use a little help um, in the spiritual area. Uh, we have people ready and able and willing to help pray for you in these situations. So check out our soul care um, opportunities through our website. Uh, and, uh, you know, you might find some help that you need from a spiritual standpoint that will help you focus and get ready for that opportunity you're going to knock out of the park down the road. So, and our online courses. Um, we, I like to think, and, uh, and Harry uh, Urschel uh, says it's our, uh, the meat and potatoes of what Crossroads is all about. The foundation of what we, we deliver uh, is our eight week course. And uh, the reason it's so fundamentally um, important is that um, it has eight seminars that focus on different aspects of the job search and the job search mindset throughout uh, that will help you immensely in, the, in your overall pursuit of uh, your career, next career opportunity. One thing that the first, the very first session is all about getting the right frame of mind, the right attitude, level setting, really putting you in the right position to be successful in job search. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that's foundational work that has to be done in order to be successful. So I highly recommend um, that, you know, they, we course, at least for that specific component, but, you know, assessments on what skills you have and what skills can be marketed through your resume. Networking, we talk about who to network with, what to network, you know, for um, different things uh, about targeting companies. The most I think the where one area that most job searchers are at least prepared is in how to target companies and be successful at targeting companies that will make them, that will get them that they're in the area that they want to be. Um, we we had a, a, the seminar tonight was on resume. We go through resumes and how to build a successful resume, um, and have interaction around it, interviewing, negotiating, all the types. So when you do get in a position where you're getting an offer, how do you negotiate the right things that you want and, and selecting the companies where you can thrive and be successful and it's not a toxic environment once you get in it. Um, yeah, these are all real critical things that we cover in the small group classes that are, are highly effective there. The one thing I would, I, I really think is that friendships and bonds are really put together. You get people that will help you with your accountability on a weekly basis give you encouragement and it really set you in the right direction on an occasion. So, you know, these courses really have uh, led to great friendships throughout the years. Um, so, and it also gives you exploration to God's perspective in your job search and, and for your life in general. So we have classes starting each, every month. Uh, we have one starting uh, this month on the 18th. Uh, it meets at six to 7.30. It's on Thursday nights there in September. There's another one uh, starting uh, for the same time frame, 6 to 7.30, and it is on Tuesdays. So um, check that out on the website. I think you'll find it. it's everything that I say it is uh, and, and more. Uh, so um, small group classes are available to you. Um, another aspect of Crossroads that uh, is, uh, can be of great help and use uh, is our uh, LinkedIn site, um, MN Crossroads Career Network. Put that in the search bar and up will come this uh, wonderful group and you can uh, ask to join. And why would you want to join? Well, according to this particular side, there's 2,100 members, but the last one I looked at had over 23 and 23 um, members who have gone through or have knowledge of what what it takes to be successful in job search and in transition. Uh, there's information posted on in here about um, you know, different aspects, uh, seminars, other things. There's questions and answers. So it's a real interactive um, LinkedIn site uh, with people who are familiar with job search and job transition that I think you'll find very valuable in your job search. Our YouTube channel. Um, we have a YouTube channel which has all the uh, seminars uh, that are ongoing through Crossroads. Uh, we have three seminars a month. 
Um, this seminar tonight will be posted uh, sometime either tomorrow or this coming week. And you can view uh, the slides and the other information that are available uh, through that uh, by checking it out on our, our YouTube channel, AMN Crossroads Career Network. So type that in your search and you will find uh, some great um, seminars. Uh, last, uh, in the month of June and July, we had George Murray on in the, uh, um, so, um, and George departed his uh, own unique um, networking um, tips and, and traits that he uses to be successful. And uh, I highly recommend that as an opportunity uh, for checking out our, our YouTube channel. So check, check us out through there. Um, if you're looking for additional information as it relates to uh, your uh, financial considerations, one of our great partners here at Crossroads has been thriving throughout the years. They help us in many ways as it relates to putting together um, different resources that help us help you and everyone else who goes through transition. Um, so um, Thriven has got three, I think it is, seminars. Um, so you can check those out through our website, um, through monthly webinars. Uh, you can check those out and sign up for them through our website and get the information you need about what financial considerations you should be considering in your job search. So um, I highly recommend those too. So here's some of the volunteers uh, that put together and help us with Crossroads. Um, this is a small section of people who have been here throughout the years. Um, dedicating their uh, time and energy to Crossroads. Um, it, it's, uh, it takes many people to make this happen. So, and we thank each and every one of them for their time and effort. So thanks. And, and if you're looking uh, for a spiritual home, um, you can find that on our website too, or you can just check out woodburylutheran.org northheights.church and grace.church and you might find your spiritual home and uh, get uh, going in person or streaming online. I still think almost every church I know is still streaming something online, just like we are these seminars. So I uh, highly recommend uh, any one of these churches. So that's um, the slides of uh, Crossroads. Uh, I want to uh, just uh, do a quick wrap up. I want to thank everyone uh, who contributed today, uh, Nancy and Wes. Uh, thank you both uh, for being here tonight and devoting your time and energy to this. And uh, we do appreciate that very much. You'll receive an email tomorrow um, and that'll talk about some of the things that I talked about uh, related to Crossroads. And, uh, um, uh, and uh, you'll find the, uh, you know, a link to our seminar and that sort of thing in that email. Um, the eight week course uh, I indicated starts on 818, which is a week from today. Uh, it's six to 730. Uh, networking uh, every Thursday morning, um, networking with Grace. Again, something to check out. One-on-one -on -one help, prayer support. Our next, web our next webinar will feature Michael Hurley navigating uh, ATS systems. Um, and that will be next Thursday. Um, so that again, the uh, 18th, uh, but that will be at 7.30 in the morning to nine. And you can find uh, a link to that and register for that in our, on our website. So um, please check that out and uh, hopefully you'll find something there. I hope this was all worthwhile for you tonight. And uh, I wish you all the best in your job search. And we hope you come back soon. Good evening and good night.